Hi my friends at, uh, on YouTube. This is Erin with Transformed by His Truth. You know, the last couple of days have been awesome. I've been uh, communicating with some of you uh, on Daniel Vallas's channel at informchristians.com. You know, we're so excited about the scepter not departing from Judah or nor the lawgiver from between his feet until Shiloh come and the gathering of his people shall be. That's us. We're the people that Shiloh was coming for in the pre-tribulation rapture. Oh, I'm so excited to be able to talk and converse and share and edify and encourage each other on this channel and on Daniel's channel. And, um, you know, hopefully, too, we're able to help some folks to get uh, more informed and perhaps put some things into a uh, better light for them. Um, I do want to make it clear that I have compassion, not me, the Holy Spirit in me, because I am no good. Um, the Holy Spirit in me has compassion on the people that are still uh, trying to find out the truth or that um, may be uh, deceived at this point. Um, I'm not saying that everybody that I had conversations with that I was not in agreement with are deceived. That's not what I'm saying at all. I just am praying for them to come to the knowledge of the truth as God leads them. Um, because He will. His Holy Spirit will lead and guide us into all truth. If we humble ourselves and open our hearts to His Word. I'll tell you, it's not always what we want to hear. But uh, it's always what we need to hear. And uh, let's not just be uh, hearers of His Word, but let's be doers also. Let's obey our Lord and Savior so that we can go in the preacher rapture. Show him you love him by your obedience to his word, by living right, by loving each other and sharing the truth, and by uh, looking for that pre-trib rapture reward. Anyway, um, this video, I wanted to uh, do a, a little bit of an addition to um, a video I already did on exposing false versions, uh, not false, but corrupted versions of God's Word. You know, a great uh, video was sent to me by a uh, brother in Christ called Trumpet for, Christ, uh, Trumpet for Christ, and I want to give the credit to him because he sent me this fantastic video that um, I'm going to uh, give you uh, the information for. Um, so I so suggest that you watch it. It's called, um, give me one second. The Real Bible Version Issue Exposed, Catholicism in the King James Bible. And it's put out, uh, well, it's posted by a graceful watchman. So I pray you will go and see that. It's 57 minutes long and wow, it's just so full of awesome information. <laughs> Again, The Real Bible Version Issue Exposed, Catholicism in the King James Bible. Okay, so hopefully um, I didn't black out at that point because of the going to another um, window. Anyway, um, so uh, there were some discussions on uh, the comments that we were making together on Daniel's channel about the validity and the trustworthiness of the King James Version only. And honestly, um, we are in the very last seconds of this era, this age, before the tribulation begins after the pre-trib rapture. And so deception is almost at its highest. It will be completely at its highest during the seven-year tribulation. But we are very, very um, in, a, in a time of deception right now. You know, Satan has attacked God's Word, the King James Bible, with a vengeance. You know, and it's not just about translators who, in this case, are very corrupt and uh, ungodly men who hated God's word, um, who have um, their critical text has been used for all these newer versions. Um, but it's about God being able to preserve his word, you know. <laughs> He gave it to the people in the Bible, the men that were inspired by God. You know, all scripture, sorry, my fan's on, it keeps blowing hair in my face. 
all scripture is inspired by God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction and for instruction in righteousness. And you know, God will preserve his word to the very end. He even puts his word above his name. That's how important his word is because the word is Jesus. Jesus Christ is the word. John 1, 1 says that in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. Jesus is the word. He's referred to it very many, many times, including in Revelation when he's talking to us, his church. Um, anyway, uh, so it's about uh, not being robbed of the deity of Christ, the fact that he is God, the Trinity, which is, the word Trinity is not in the Bible, but there are many statements by God himself talking about we, you know, in the beginning, you know, he said, um, um, in the beginning, God created, you know, he's ha always had a begin. Uh, he's always been, and he always will be. He's, he doesn't have an end or a beginning. He is the end in the beginning. <laughs> But he talks about, uh, let us make man in our image. Now, don't misunderstand. That doesn't mean that we're little gods like Kenneth Copeland and Joyce Meyer and all these false teachers like to say, which is blasphemy. If you're listening to them, watch my videos about them. Get away from them. They're liars and they're being used by Satan to deceive God's people. Uh, I know I used to be one of the people that followed them. I since come to my senses, the Holy Spirit has led me because I wanted to know the truth into all truth. I'm still learning every day and growing as we all are. Nobody's made it there yet, so to speak. Anyway, um, so God, the Godhead is biblical. You know, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are one, but yet they are three. It's a mystery. But we are to understand it because God's, or to believe it because God's word says it. We don't understand everything in his word, not at this point, but we will someday. You know, we see through a glass darkly now, but when we're with him, we'll see him as he really is. So, you know, all the questions that we have about this, that, or the other thing, if they even matter at that point, will be answered by Father. He'll let us know what we need to know, as he has now in his word. And he doesn't speak outside of his word. He does not speak past the canon of scripture. It was finished. And that is what we have to hear from God. You know, I have a saying, if I can get it right. <laughs> if you want to know what God has to say, read the word of God. If you want to hear God's voice, read the word out loud. So anyway, ha ha. Um, back to uh, why you can trust only the King James. You know, um, watch the video I recommend. I will um, read from a couple of uh, articles about it. And uh, open your heart to God. He'll show you the truth. Okay, so, and I get very upset with people who try to um, say that the King James, why well, don't get upset? I get frustrated because... You know, they say the King James is too hard to understand. Well, it's not. Uh, the Holy Spirit will help us to understand His Word. You know, and God preserved it in that language for us. We may not speak that way today, but if you do your research about what the these and the thousand and those really stand for, it's a very personal way of speaking to us from our Father. Look it up. Anyway, um... So let me go to, uh, not that one, um, oops, hang on, I messed up. Um, I want to go to an article that I recently found. Uh, I have other uh, articles that I cite on Westcott and Hort, who were two demonically inspired men that uh, Satan used to bring on, uh, bring about the uh, text for all this, these fake versions. Um, okay, so um, to begin with, they were unbelievers. And so I'm just going to quickly say, 
uh, from this article from Christian Doctrine. Uh, I don't necessarily agree with everything on any article that I cite, just the contents in the article themselves or the videos. I always try to say that because I don't want people to come back and say, oh, well, this person said that. Well, that's not what I was talking about. And maybe they are. And, you know, I don't know where they are on that issue particularly. I just know where they are on this one. So, um, well, this is a really long uh, article, but I'm going to put, I'm going to go ahead and read it. It's by K.B. Napier, N-A-P-I-E-R. It's from uh, January 2013, so it's not that old. Okay. okay, so I am often asked which is the best Bible version to buy and use. My answer is always the same, the 1611 King James Authorized Version, but not the modern KJV. And I always advise that all modern versions are based on the sinful theological practices of Westcott and Hort, unbelievers who hated the Authorized Version. Enthusiasts of the modern versions complain that their versions no longer follow the system developed by Westcott and Hort, so our statement is no longer valid. This is deception. Modern versions do base their work on these two unbelievers. Some textual critics of the 20th century tend to publicly distance themselves from West Cotton Horde because their work has been discredited. Now they claim to use an eclectic Greek text, even though these critics use unbelieving methods themselves. In other words, they cherry pick bits and pieces from a wide variety of sources instead of from one source, West Cotton Horde. All this does is to spread the muck over a wider area. The only real way to translate is to use original sources as favored and used by genuine translators. This is how the authorized version trans translators worked. By genuine, I mean men who actually believed the Bible and did not try to win over, win one over on others. As the Way of Life Literature website says, this position dodges the real issue, which is the fact that West Cotton Hort represented the signal departure from the received text, which is the Textus Receptus, that is represented today. So they departed from that. Sorry, let me read that again. This position dodges the real issue which is the fact that West Cotton Horn represented the signal departure from the received text that is represented today in the popular theories of textual criticism. West Cotton Horn built upon the foundation established by their predecessors, such as Griesbach, Lachmann, and Tischendorf. West Cotton Horn adopted the textual, the textual theories on these men by their own, into their own unique blend, and their Greek New Testament represented the first popular departure from the Greek received text, which is the Textus Receptus, also known as the received text. The men referred to were advocates of higher critical analysis and similar modernist trends. Gee, that doesn't say a lot about them, does it? Uh, as being very uh, godly. They were unbelievers who, pose, who imposed their own literature-based literature ideas onto the Bible given by God. So Westcott and Hort, who were unbelievers, based their own skewed translations on these men's works. work. Note that the much-used heretical Schofield Bible used by dispensationalists is also found on the work of Westcott and Hort, as are all modern versions to a greater or lesser degree. I would like to put in that I am a dispensationalist, but I don't use the Schofield Bible. I do believe that dispensationalism is um, biblical, and uh, that's a whole other video. But anyway, um, so the statement says that Westcott and Hort departed from genuine translation by inventing their own, using unbelieving systems, and most modernist translators do exactly the same. This is proof proved by the work of Bruce Metzger, the most influential critical analysis analyst today, uh, he admitted, hold on, I have to take a drink of water. Okay, so the inter so this is his quote, the international committee that produced the United Bible Society's Greek New Testament not only adopted the Westcott and Hort edition as its basic text, but followed their methodology in giving attention to both external and internal consideration. This is cited by James Brooks, Bible Interpreters of the 20th Century, page 264. 
James Brooks also adds, there is nothing unique about Metzger's theory of textual criticism. It is simply a refinement of Westcott and Hort's theory in the New Testament in the original Greek, 1881. This theory is dominant today in part because of Metzger's, of Metzger's great influence. It was the theory employed in producing the United Bible Society's Greek text. It is a theory lying behind the Greek text used by most modern versions, the Revised Standard, the newest revised, or the new Revised Standard, the New English Bible, the Revised English Bible, the New American Bible, the New American Standard, the Good News Bible, the NIV, New International Version, and to a lesser extent, also the Jerusalem Bible and the New Jerusalem Bible. Okay. Back to his quote again. The Westcott Hort text has become today our textus receptus. Now mine. We have been freed from the only one, I'm sorry, we have been freed from the one only to become cap captivated, captivated by the other. The psychological chains so recently broken from our fathers have again been forged upon us even more strongly. Even the textual specialist finds it difficult to break the habit of evaluating every witness by the norm of this current textus receptus. His mind may have rejected the Westcott Hort term neutral, but his technical procedure still reflects the general acceptance of the text. Psychologically, it is now difficult to approach the textual, textual problem with free and independent mind. According to Clark, in today's problems with the critical text of the New Testament, uh, translations in biblical scholarship edited by J.C.R. Rylardsdom, in Chicago University of Chicago Press, 1968 page, 158 to 160. Okay. The textual theory of Westcott and Hort underlies virtually all subsequent work in textual in New Testament textual criticism. That's by uh, Introduction to New Testament Textual Criticism, Grand Rapids, Eerdmans, 1964, page 76. So, and another quote, the dead hand of Fenton John Anthony Hort lies heavy, heavy upon us. In the early years of this century, Kearsop Lake described Hort's work as a failure, though a glorious one. But Hort did not fail to reach his major goal. He dethroned the Textus Receptus. Hort's success in this task and the congency, congency of his tightly reasoned theory shaped and still shapes the thinking of those who approach the textual criticism of the New Testament through the English language. Uh, so that's by Ernest Cadman Cowell, Scribal Habits in Early Papyra, a study, uh, a study in the corrup corruption of the text, the Bible in Modern Scholarship, edited by J.P. Hyatt, New York, Abington Press, 1965, page 370. Quote, the, thus, uh, so here's another quote, thus the text built upon the work of the 19th century has remained as a whole unchanged, particularly since the recent, I'm sorry, re research of recent years has not yet led to the establishment of a generally acknowledged New Testament text. That is Erwin Nestle and Kurt Allen, Novum Testament, um, 24th edition, 1960, page 62. Okay, so, and another quote, to deny their influence is similar to denying the influence of Darwin on contemporary evolutionary thought. Many planks of Darwin's theories have been discredited, but Darwin and his theories are important because of the key pivotal role in the field. Wayoflife.org. Uh, modern, another quote, modern textual criticism is psychologically addicted to Westcott and Hort. Westcott and Hort, in turn, were rationalists in their approach to the textual problem in the New Testament, employed techniques within which rationalism and every other kind of bias are free to operate. The result of it all is a methodolo methodological quagmire, where objective controls on the conclusion of critics are nearly non-existent. It goes without saying that no Bible-believing Christian who is willing to extend the implications of his faith to textual matters can have the slightest grounds for confidence in contemporary critical texts. Emphasis added, that's Jane C. Hodges, Rationalism and Contemporary New Testament Textual Criticism, Bibliotheca Sacra, January 1971, page 35. Um, I know this all is kind of uh, in depth, but it's important. Okay, now as for James White, who uh, a person that I was uh, talking with on the um, on Daniel's website about the King James cited, uh, and I looked him up, 
you know, which we should always look up what we believe all the way back to the beginning because you just never know and it's just foolish to not because the New Testament is full of warnings about false doctrine. So, you know, we need to do our research. Okay, so quote, James White, author of the King James Only Controversy and others attempting to discredit the defense of the King James Bible, claim that Westcott and Hort are not important because they say the modern versions, New American Standard Version and NIV, are not based on the Alexandrian text or on the Westcott and Hort text. Hort's text, they are. They are based on the eclectic text, which sometimes favors the Texas Receptus over Aleph or B, by way of life.org. This is true as far as it goes, but ignores the heart of the issue. The fact is that the United Bible Society's text is almost identical to the Westcott Hort text of 1881 in significant departures from the received text, otherwise known as the Texas Receptus, wavelife.org. For example, this is another quote. For example, both the Westcott and Hort and the uh, United Bible Society, Society delete or question, delete or question almost the same number of verses. Westcott and Hart do that with a 48, and the United Bible Society does it with 45. I'm sorry, but if you do that with one of God's scriptures, you, the Revelation says you will be, you will, um, your name will be taken out of the Book of Life. You know, and you will, the plagues in the Bible will be added to you. You don't mess with God's word. Both delete almost the same number of significant portions of verses, entire verses. West Cotton Hort, 193, and the United Bible Society, 212. An extensive comparison of the um, Textus Receptus against the West Cotton Hort text, the Nestle's text, the United Bible Society text, and key English versions was done by the late Everett Fowler and can be found in his book, Evaluating Versions of the New Testament, available from Bible for Today. I, I recommend that. Go and see. The West Cotton Hort text of 1881 and the latest edition of the United Bible Society text differ only in relatively minor points. Both represent the same type of text with the same type of departures from the received text. They follow the type of text found in the Vaticanus and the Sinaiticus. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but which the Reformation era Greek editors believed was a doctrinally corrupt text that was modified during the theological battles occurring in the two centuries after the apostles. The fact is that the Westcott and Hort texts represent the first widely accepted departure from the received text in the post-Reformation era, and the modern English versions descend directly from the Westcott and Hort text. The Westcott Hort Greek text is very significant and its editors are highly significant to the history of textual criticism. Any man who discounts the continuing significance of Westcott and Hort in the field of Bible texts and versions is probably trying to throw up a smoke screen to hide something. This, all these quotes are from wayoflife.org. I, I agree. Okay, so it goes on. There's a, a, a column of unbelief dressed as truth, which um, I'm going to... Another one that says King James only. Oh, let's I just want to quickly show the people that uh, are not, who, who fight against the King James only truth. Um, and I've looked every one of these people, not every one of them, but I will look up the ones I haven't. Uh, uh, okay. Quotes are from graceway.com. You don't have to read very much in contemporary fundamentalist Baptist literature to come across warnings about the King James only controversy. Dr. Jerry Falwell announces that he is hiring Dr. Harold Rawlings to refute the King James only cultic movement that is damaging so many good churches today. Yeah, Jerry, you mean that they're exposing the truth and you don't like it because you're an Illuminati plant. Dr. Robert Sumner warns about the veritable fountain of misinformation and deceptive double talk on the subject of King James onlyism. Another person that is not uh, incorrect doctrine. Dr. J.B. Williams, who I don't know who that is, refers to those who advocate the King James only as misinformers and a cancerous sore. <laughs> yeah, I bet Satan thinks that. He wants the, the deceptions that people, or the, the corrupted versions that people are reading because they take away from all the things that matter for salvation. The doctrine of the blood, 
the doctrine of the deity of Christ, which cannot be compromised, none of this can, and the Trinity, that Jesus Christ is God. Uh, uh, Dr. Robert Joyner, who I think is Rick Joyner's father, I'm not sure, calls King James Bible loyalist heretics. Really? Well, I'm sorry, but um, the heretics will be revealed very soon, and I pray that all these guys repent if they're still alive. Dr. James R. Wright, White, the guy I quoted in the conversation with me on Daniel's channel about the King James Bible, warns about King James Bible proponents undercutting the very foundations of the faith itself. Unquote. Well, how would that be when we are actually defending the omitting of Scripture and the changing of Scripture? They're liars. Note who these people are. Also note that charismatics, which I used to be, tend to sneer at the 1611 King James Version, particularly because they are universalist Arminian heretics. The, the name of the various denominations is irrelevant to this, so I'm not gonna, it's not gonna go there. Such references to the King James only controversy are very common, so this is a quote. Some refer to loyal supporters of the King James Bible as the King James only cult. Yeah, anything you can do at the enemy of God to, uh, you can't burn us at the stake in this country, so you're gonna do anything else you can. Okay, another common term is the snaring reference to the King Jimmy Boys. Oh. However, the use of the King James Bible only wasn't always so controversial, controversial, for the world was definitely King James only for centuries, as newer versions came and went. All right. There had always been opposition to the King James Version from Rome. Surprise, surprise. But the attack in the 1870s came from many who were officially Anglican, Westcott, a bishop, and spiritual advisor to the Queen, and Hort, professor at Cambridge University, both decided without a real reason that the oldest manuscripts must be better than the ones used for the 1611 King James Version. Even though centuries of biblical scholars thought otherwise, they set out to replace the King James Version and its Textus Receptus sources with their own version, based on manuscripts rejected by King James Version translators and earlier schol scholars. As one commentator says, hold on. in short, their theory suggests that for 1,500 years the preserved Word of God was lost until it was recovered in the 19th century in a trash can in the Vatican Library. Well, there's a problem there. Let's remember that the Vatican is the home of the Scarlet Beast, the, the woman who rides the beast. The Catholic Church, the Roman Catholic Church is the whore of Babylon. You know, do your research. No wonder they hated the tech, the King James Version. It's the truth. All right. Sorry. Um, mm -hmm. Both major sources were used by Westcott and Hort were then of Roman Catholic origin, just like Arminianism. Arminianism. R.A.B., an editor for Graceway.org, adds, Hort clearly has a bias against the Texas Receptus. Yes, calling it villainous and vile. Hort aggressively taught that the school at Antioch, associated with Lucian, has loosely translated the true text of Scripture in the 2nd century A.D. This supposedly created an unreliable text of Scripture, which became the Texas Receptus. Really? Give me a break. This was called the Lucian Recension Theory. This guy... Uh, that R.A.B. knows what he's talking about. Hort used his own hypothesis to prove the sources for the King for the King James Version were wrong. He had no actual proof from anywhere. In this, he reflected the wicked theories put out by the emerging higher critical schools and their various sub-schools. This undermining of truth still goes on in most Bible schools and seminaries. That's why most of these Bible schools and minister and ministries and seminaries, or sorry, not ministries, but seminaries, are teaching things like this and that scripture is not ins truly inspired by God and that uh, we can it cannot be trusted as God's word and you know that uh, just a bunch of other garbage all right Al so this is a quote Alfred Martin former vice president at Moody Bible Institute where um, James R. White went to school Institute wrote in 1951 the present generation of Bible students have been reared on Westcott and Hort for the most part it for the most, let's see, have been reared on Westcott and Hort have for the most part accepted this theory without independent or critical examination. There's their mistake. 
If believing Bible students had the evidence of both sides put before them instead of one side only, there would be not there would not be so much blind following of West Cotton Hort. The two most popular Greek manuscripts today, Nestle's Allen and United Bible Society, differ very little from the West Cotton Hort text. He's a former vice president. He probably got away from there because he realized what was going on. I hope for him. What you have to believe to accept the West Cotton Hort theory. Okay, I do want to quickly go into this. You have to believe that people who believe in the deity of Christ often corrupt Bible manuscripts. You have to believe that people who deny the deity of Christ never corrupt Bible manuscripts. You have to believe that people who died to get the gospel to the world couldn't be trusted with the Bible. You have to believe that their killers could be trusted. You have to believe that the Celtic Christians, Waldenese, Albigenes, I'm sorry, I'm probably butchering these words, Henricians, Petrobrusians, Paulicians, Paulicians, the Greek Orthodox Church, the Protestant churches, the Anabaptists, and the Baptists all did not have the pure word of God. You have to believe that the Roman Catholics in the 19th century rationalists did have the pure word of God. Remember, the Roman Catholic Church is the uh, whore of Babylon. We can all argue the merits of the various groups above, but the, the gist of the argument is there. All right. And then it goes down here and talks about how West Cotton Hort are heretics. And they are. Okay, here's a, a okay, I am going to read this. West Cotton Hort were heretics who hated scripture as God's word and hated the 1611 King James Version because it is closest to the original scriptures. Excuse me. Even Hort's own mother, a genuine Bible, Bible believer, did not accept her son's new hypotheses. Hort received a letter from Westcott saying that he totally rejected the idea of the infallibility of the Bible. Do you need any more proof? Hort agreed and repeated this to Bishop Lightfoot. Then when Westcott became Bishop of Durham, the Journal of the University of Durham praised him because he was free from all verbal or mechanical ideas of inspiration. Hort believed that Christ's death on the cross was immoral and so repeated the usual stance of the high church, unbelieving. The lower church was at the time evangelical and Bible believing, and I would have been a part of that then too. The, I, I am actually not even evangelical, I'm just a fundamental Bible believer. I don't want to be put into any group because they, you know, even the evangelical church is uh, going into a bunch of junk. The high church was Romanistic and taught salvation by works which is the usual overall stance of modern Anglicanism. Thus, Westcott and Hort taught that the idea of propitiation was foreign to the New Testament, really, and that salvation is merely a continuing process on a continuum of becoming a Christian by changing one's characters and ideas. Do you see how they're stealing away Christ's shed blood for all of our sins? That is, people are always Christians but need to work it out in their own lives. Ugh. The so-called high church specialized in using vague terms so as not to alarm the population, and especially in denying the deity of Christ. Being intellectuals, which is a problem, although you can be very intellectual and know the truth. Both Westcott and Hort could easily have used clear language when teaching on Christ, etc., but they did not. They chose unclear fuzzy language in order to hide their true position from scrutiny. Westcott rejected the histos historicity of Genesis 1 through 3. Hort praised Darwin and evolution. Both Westcott and Hort also praised the Christian socialist movement and thus communism, and Westcott took active part in its organization and work. Inevitably, both men advocated reunion, reunion with Rome. They read and approved rationalist philosophers, uh, see our series on philosophy, and made much of Aristotle and Plato. It is my view, based on the details of their lives, that neither man was saved. Uh, mine too. Both hated and rejected true gospel preaching. You cannot be saved and say those things about the Bible. Because you're saying about the word, of the word, which is Jesus, which is God. Who is God? <sighs> so anyway, this uh, article goes on in uh, the English Revision Committee. Westcott and Hort, occultists? Yes, they were. There's a whole thing on this. And then the conclusion... Okay, you want to, um, I do want to read a little bit on them being occultists. In 1993, Gail Ripplinger claimed Westcott and Hort were in fact occultists. It was found that Westcott and Hort, together with Bishop Edward White Benson, founded the Ghostly Guild. 
to investigate paranormal supernatural occurrences. Evidently, this presupposes that scripture is not sufficient to explain them, but science is. It became the Society for Physical Psychical Research and led to the rise in spiritualism. Westcott and Hort eventually left the organization, but it leaves a huge question mark over their credibility, not to mention all the other things we've already talked about. Westcott's son said that his father had a lifelong faith in spiritualism, not Christianity. It was fashionable, even with Queen Victoria, who was misled led by her advisors, including Westcott. Westcott also believed in a practice in the so-called communion of the saints, which believes we can commune with the recently dead. Um, the Bible calls that necromancy and forbids it. Westcott loved to commune with spirits in the cathedral. Ugh. Well, he could because the Spirit of God is not in the cathedral because it's Catholic and he is not there. I don't mean any offense, but look up your look up the origin of the Catholic Church. Ah, alone at night. Ugh. Both Westcott and Hort joined a secret society called the Apostles, which also tried to use occult forces. Westcott joined another secret society called the Arenas Club, containing members who held seances, such as Arthur, Arthur Balfour, who became prime minister and a founder of the Socialist League of Nations. The club also became known for its occultism. Many who support Westcott and Hork claim they use the right language. This is to be expected of men who wanted to hide their true positions behind great orthodox statements of faith. It happens today among unbelieving Anglican priests. Letters by Westcott and Hort clearly indicate they were devious in their beliefs because they could not afford to have all their beliefs made known to the general public. Quote, Dean John Burgeon was a contemporary and acquaintance of both Westcott and Hort. He was a firm, op firm opponent of the Westcott and Hort theory, their new Greek text and the revision of the English Bible that they so heavily influenced. In an article entitled The Secret Spanking of Westcott and Hort, Burgon wrote, quote, the text of the doctors Westcott and Hort is either the very best which has ever appeared, or else it is the very worst. The nearest to the sacred autographs, um, the, oh, I'm sorry, autographs, or the furthest from them. Yeah, it's the latter. There is no room for both opinions, and there cannot exist any middle view. In other words, the things that are different are not the same. Graceway.org. Millions of profession, professing evangelicals have never heard of Westcott and Hort. Nonetheless, their approach to the scriptures is based upon the theory of Westcott and Hort. Westcott and Hort only. No matter how many books, professors, colleges, and denominational leaders these theories are filtered through, they are still the work of Westcott and Hort. Those who challenge the primacy of the King James Bible in the English-speaking world depend on the work of Westcott and Hort. And if you want to put your faith in them um, as opposed to the Spirit of God, then, you know, I pray for you because... There's so much proof here. I, you couldn't need any more if you really want to know the truth or if you're really open to it. Um, Westcott and Hort are not a sufficient basis to reject the Textus Receptus or the King James Bible. Their objectivity, scholarship, and doctrine are all at best suspect. There's no reason to believe that they were saved men. There's n more reason to believe that they were influenced by the occult than there is to believe that they were influenced by the Holy Spirit. Perhaps the King James only controversy is misnamed. It is really a Westcott and Hort only controversy. Are you willing to abandon the historic contributions of the Textus Receptus and the King James Bible for Westcott and Hort? Westcott and Hort only? Um, so, conclusion, and there's, you know, was into a little um, parable about an architect and this and that. But anyway, um, I'm not sure how long this has been going on, how long this uh, video is. Um, Oh, 38 minutes. Okay. Um, so, you know, I really, I really hope and I pray that you'll take all this into true prayerful consideration because God wants us to know his truth. And if we humble ourselves, if we truly seek him with all of our hearts, we will find him and his truth. Um, you know, there is, a, let's see. Something else I wanted to show very quickly about uh, the King James. Give me a second, I'm trying to find it. Um, let's see. Um, there's also another uh, 
website. It's called, uh, I think it's called um, JesusTheSavior.com. It is. You know, I don't agree with everything on that website, but I do agree with his uh, research on uh, the and his support of the 1611 King James Bible. Um, so you can go to 1611 King James Bible dot com, and it comes up with uh, you've got the home. The, uh, there's different um, things. Is there's does it matter? There's talks about the manuscripts. There's West Cotton Hort is old or better. There's other translations, altered verses, and links. You know, go to that website and go to and check out the ones that I've I've um, um, shown you here. Because they're so important, you know, knowing the truth is so very important. Uh, oh, let me read real quickly. Um, prior to the 20th century, all English Bibles since Tyndale's first New Testament, 1526, were based on the Textus Receptus. This includes Miles Coverdale's Bible from 1535. Matthew's Bible, 1500 to 1555, the Great Bible, 1939, the Geneva Version, uh, 1560, the Bishop's Bible, 1568, and the King James Version, 1611. Uh, ancient versions follow the reading of the Textus Receptus. These versions include the Peshitta Version, AD 150, the Italic Bible, AD 157, 157, the Waldensian from AD 120 and onward, the Gaelic or the Gallic G A L L I C K Bible, Southern France, AD 177, the Gothic Bible, AD 330 to 350, the Old Syriac Bible, AD 400, the Armenian Bible, AD 400. There are 1244, 1244 copies of this version still in existence. The Armenian, the Palestinian Syriac, AD 450. The French Bible of Oliveton from AD 1535, the Czech Bible from AD 1602, the Italian Bible of Diodati, AD 1606, the Greek Orthodox Bible used from apostolic times to the present day by the Greek Orthodox Church. Um, in his excellent book, Truth Triumphant, The Church in the Wilderness, Benjamin Wilkers Wilkinson writes, the Protestant denominations are built upon the manuscript of the Greek New Testament, sometimes called the Textus Receptus, or the Received Text. It is that Greek New Testament from which the writings of the apostles in Greek have been translated into English, German, Dutch, and other languages. During the Dark Ages, the Received Text was practically unknown outside the Greek Church. It was restored to Christendom by the labors of that great scholar Erasmus. Uh, it is altogether too little known that the real editor of the received text was Lucian, L-U-C-I-A-N. None of Lucian's enemies failed to credit him with this work. Neither Lucian nor Erasmus, uh, excuse me, but rather the, okay, neither Lucian nor Erasmus, but rather the apostles wrote the Greek New Testament. However, Lucian's day was an age of apostasy, like today, when a flood of depra deprivations was systematically attempting to devastate both the Bible manuscripts and Bible theology. Gee, Satan never changes, does he? Origen of the Alexandrian College made his editions and commentaries of the Bible a secure retreat for all errors and deformed them with philosophical speculations, in introducing casuistry, casuistry and lying. Lucian's unrivaled success in verifying, safeguarding, and transmitting those divine writings left a heritage for which all generations should be thankful. Okay, so real quickly, uh, why did the early churches of the 2nd and 3rd centuries and all the Protestant reformers of the 15th, 16th, and 17th centuries choose Textus, textus Receptus in preference to the minority texts? The answer is because of the following. Textus Receptus is based on the vast majority, over 95% of the 5,300 plus Greek manuscripts in existence. That is why it is also called the majority text. Textus Receptus is not mutilated with, with deletions, additions, and amendments, as is the minority text. Textus Receptus agrees with the early versions, earliest versions of the Bible, the Peshitta, the Old Latin Vulgate, the Italic Bible, 
etc. These Bibles were produced some 200 years before the minority texts like Vatican and Sinaitic, Sinai. The Vaticanus and the Sinaitic, however you say it, Sinaiticus. They were favored by the Roman Catholic Church. Red flag! Textus Receptus agrees with the vast majority of the 86,000 plus citations from scripture by the early church fathers. Textus Receptus is untainted with, untainted with Egyptian philosophy and unbelief. The person that wrote me about this brought up the Egyptian. And you know, they haven't dug deep enough, I guess, or they don't care. It's not an argument. I just want to prove that the, the King James is true because of the error of the other scripts or the other uh, Bibles um, and the transcripts. Texas Receptus strongly upholds the fundamental doctrines of the Christian faith, the creation account in Genesis, the divinity of Jesus Christ, the virgin birth, the Savior's miracles, his bodily resurrection, his literal return, and the cleansing power of his blood, which all the new versions either omit or downplay. There's a problem with that, a major problem. Textus Receptus was and still is the enemy of the Roman Catholic Church. This is an important fact to bear in mind. Anyway, and at the bottom of this, it's awesome because it has, um, uh, yeah, it has uh, articles that you can go to on Catholic Catholics and the Jesuits. I'm a former Catholic, so you know I've done my deep research on the Catholics and the Jesuits. They're very wicked. Not Catholics who don't know, but the people in charge, they know what they're doing. Tischendorf, Origen, Constantine, um, all of it. So please, 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 please go to these, uh, go to these websites. Go to these places that uh, God has made available through these people. It's so important. You know, the truth is... Uh, is uh, believed by faith but we can also believe by the overwhelming amount of proof we have in fulfilled scripture in these textual proofs scientific archaeological medicinal prophetic or fulfill, fulfilled prophecy unless i said that at first i think i did and uh, many other proofs that the bible is not only true but it's God's very own words. And you know, it's every, every word preserved in the King James Bible is um, perfect. And God does not mince words. He doesn't put one single dot or tittle in there that is not important. So I really pray today that you'll humble yourself. Ask God to show you the truth. You know, I'm just one person trying to help others to um, come out of false doctrine including the false version or uh, corrupted versions of the Bible. Anyway, I'm going to make another uh, video now on the danger of the uh, of gem gematria, gematria. Uh, there are so many people that are trying to find Bible codes and all this junk in this uh, stuff. And you know, it's very dangerous and it's not necessary. Um, God has given us all that we need to know in his word. And the only number he asks us to figure out is the number of the beast. And he tells us it's 666. So, and he says that we, the body of Christ that goes in the pre-trib rapture, will not know the identity of the Antichrist. He will not be revealed until after the rapture. So please be ready. Please go to Daniel's uh, Informed Christians website and watch the letters to the seven churches so that you can be ready to meet Jesus Christ in the air in the rapture and so that you won't be left behind with the hypocrites and those that didn't put him first and didn't study to show themselves approved okay guys i i pray that this has been a blessing and i know it upset some but i you know sometimes that's what we need to come to the knowledge of the truth thank you and i pray that uh, you have grace and peace in jesus name